In our top stories, Museveni says pockets of insecurity in the country will be handled. Christians across the country celebrate Palm Sunday. Looming famine in Bunyoro as army worms destroy crops. And government to deploy UPDF in Teso to battle rustlers. Good evening once again and welcome to our first edition of UBC News Tonight. Now we start off with our first headlining story this evening. President Yuri Kaguta Museveni has said that the country is safe and stable, save for a few pockets of insecurity that are being handled. General Museveni was speaking at the pass out of the fourth intake of 6,237 local defense personnel who underwent a six months basic military training at Oliver Tambo Military Training School in Kaweweta, Nakaseke District. <laughs> A total of 6,237 local defense personnel who have been undergoing a six-month basic training at Oliver Tambo Military Training School in Nakaseke have been passed out. <laughs> the recruits demonstrated to President Yuri Kaguta Museveni skills in self-defense, short and long-range shooting, among others. They also saw the oath of allegiance to serve and defend the sovereignty of Uganda. <laughs> President Yuri Kaguta Museveni congratulated the new soldiers for persevering through the six-month training to finish the course and noted that these will serve as local defense personnel for a short time and will later be integrated into the army. And this is the plan I am aware of is that Many, if not all of you, will be absorbed in the army. The idea of LDUs is that LDUs are trained and they go back to their civilian jobs and remain in reserve. The president encouraged the new recruits to maintain discipline and ensure good health at all times. President Museveni also sounded a stern warning to all those encroaching on the army land to vacate immediately. That some fellows had encroached on the army land should get out. I am the one who told the army to come here because I was here fighting. I know the, the land myself. This land belonged to, to the Union. I think it was either Wamara or Mengo, one of them, of the two. And we, I was camped there, there at, uh, near here, at Waza. That's why I was camped. I know the land myself. The Chief of Defense Forces, General Wilson Mbasumbadi, noted that the recruits should brace themselves for more training in the specialized units where they will be deployed for better results. Earlier on, President Cherry Kaguta Museveni commissioned waterworks to serve Kaweweta Recruits Training School, Fort Samora Michelle Special Forces School, and the Oliver Renga Tambo School of Leadership and Pan African Center of Excellence. He also commissioned the new road network connecting all the institutions at Kaweweta. Samuel Sanono. UBC News. The Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace Stephen Kazimba Mugalu, has urged Ugandans to make peace, love, and be kind to each other. Kazimba Mugalu was leading a Palm Sunday service at his home on Namirembe.
Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace Stephen Kazimba Mugalu, has asked Christians to welcome Jesus in their lives. Kazimba Mugalu was leading a Palm Sunday service at his home on Namirembe Hill. It's about uh, Jesus' meekness and humility, which we need definitely to uh, emulate as Christians, to humble our souls and Humility is very important. It is not self degradation by the source of power. But also, we are reminded of God who takes care of each one of us. Kazima urged those engaged in vices of robbing, injuring, and killing others with all kinds of weapons to repaint and stop such vices. So appeal people who are killing each other, the Bijambia people, why are you killing your friends? You are also going to die one day. If you have any issue, why don't you bring it for discussion? So this is not good. As we celebrate Palm Sunday, it's about peace. It's about love. It's about kindness. At Namirembe Cathedral, the service was characterized by waving of palm leaves, a ritual that is key in marking Palm Sunday. Reverend Abraham Moyinda Nsubuga of Namirembe Cathedral cautioned Christians against selfishness and betrayal. The preachers call on all people to get saved as the only way to have peace prevail on earth. I'm Navka Farida and Daniel Lugemwa at Nam it is Palm Sunday, a day that ushers in a seven-day Holy Week that climaxes into Easter Sunday. Believers have been urged to participate actively in all the activities of the Holy Week. Rubaga Cathedral Administrator Reverend Father Achilles Mayanja was presiding over the early morning Palm Sunday Mass at Rubaga Cathedral. The Bible has it that when Jesus Christ made the triumphant entry into Jerusalem on the donkey, hundreds cheered up him. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of the Holy Week. On this Palm Sunday, we reenact, we celebrate and remember Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem as he was going to accomplish his mission of saving the whole world. It is since then that world over the Christian community celebrates the journey of the Savior who endured pain, suffering and death for mankind. From the, f the first reading which we have heard, how the suffering servant of God was humbled, was tortured, but he never made any resistance. He humbly accepted all that. In the second reading, the same nature of humility is highlighted. When Christ became humble, even being killed and dying for our sins on the cross. The festivities begins with a Lent season that is ushered in by Ash Wednesday, followed by Palm Sunday, celebrated today. <laughs> The journey of Jesus' suffering can't be complete if one leaves out the story of one of his disciples, Simon Peter, whose loyalty at one time disappeared, not until the third cock crow. St. Peter was one of those who said that I will die, even if it means going to prison or to die with Christ, I will die with him. But when Jesus was arrested, St. Peter took off for his life. Fortunately, Later, when he had the cock crowing, he realized his sin and sought God's merciful forgiveness. It is on this note that Reverend Achilles Mayanja from Rubaga Cathedral invites believers to pick lessons from Jesus' suffering story. 
we can see Saint Peter denied Jesus, but he came to his senses and sought forgiveness. Today, many, con many people's conscience are dead. They are hardened. They can no longer differentiate between what is sinful and what is right. So let us emulate Saint Peter and be sensitive to sin and do all in our power to return to God and seek God's forgiveness. Palm Sunday now ushers in the Holy Christian Week to be preceded by Good Friday, literally referred to as Easter Virgin and the Way of the Cross and Easter Sunday, which is the resurrection day of the Son of Lord Jesus Christ, thus marking the end of the Lent period according to the Christian calendar. Robert Onyango, UBC News. <laughs> Thank you, Robert Nyango, for that. Now, hundreds of Christians this Sunday gathered at Bina Parish Mutungo in Nakawa Division, Kampala, Archdiocese, to celebrate Palm Sunday. The main celebrant, Reverend Father Kasereka Fred, advised Christians to consolidate their faith through maintaining human humility in their daily activities. <laughs> Christians across the world have this Sunday marked Palm Sunday, the day that ushers in the Holy Week. Palm Sunday is a commemoration of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem on a donkey with his followers, waving palm leaves and olive branches. At Bina Parish in Mutungo Kampala Archdiocese, the main celebrant Reverend the Father Kasalika Fred advised the believers and leaders at all levels to embrace values of humility like Jesus was. Readings are calling us upon to be humble. We follow our Lord, who was a savior, who was a redeemer, and he was God. But look, he humbled himself and accepted to be judged by the earthly judges, to be killed by earthly soldiers. But the King of Kings accepted because he was humble. <laughs> Kasereka urged Christians to be resilient in all they do, including keeping a positive hope and helping the needy, the elderly, and orphans. Seeing a lot of challenges in this Easter period. I know most of you are looking at the high prices of fuel, look at high prices of all the commodities, but be patient. The Lord is with us. Stand with the Lord, pray for one another. Those who have, please assist those who don't have. Everyone, don't, don't be afraid for Christ is with us and will lead us through and will help us through in this period. He was also concerned about the increasing prices of essential goods, especially fuel prices, and asked the government for positive intervention. Let us all of us leaders be humble. This humble Christ even washed the feet of his apostles. Let us also, dear leaders, friends, and everywhere, family members, also lead by example. Be humble and we serve our people. Robert Katamba, UBC News. Now, if there's anything to add color to the celebrations of Palm Sunday in Nazareth, it is the procession which comes after the Mass. Thousands of Christians across the world visit the Church of Pronunciation to engage in the Palm Sunday Mass. Take a look. Christians all over the world have marked the Palm Sunday, which also starts the Holy Week. Nazareth is the hometown of Jesus Christ, and I have visited the Church of Annunciation to join the thousands of celebrants during this Holy Palm Sunday Mass. Nazareth is called the City of Jesus, and this is where we find the biggest number of Christians in Israel. The Church, or the Basilica of Annunciation, accommodates the place where Mary, the mother of Jesus, received the news of her journey to conceive and give birth to the Savior of the world, brought by Angel Gabriel. To be the mother of Jesus. Yeah. And she thought she was very shocked because she never knows a man and she's still uh, uh, engaged with Joseph. Mm. So she was very shocked and she know, wow! And she always used to stay in the church mm. to help in the sacristy of the church. So she was the girl of church and she was very pure. Mm. So uh, God chose her to be the mother of Jesus. Mass at the Annunciation Church in Nazareth unites all the Christians. Let it be the Catholics, the Orthodox, the Protestants, 
everyone who believe in Jesus Christ come together in this church to celebrate the Palm Sunday. This place is being preserved underneath the church, called it the lower floor of the Church of Annunciation. By 10 o'clock this morning of Palm Sunday, the church was already full to capacity as the congregants waved the palm and olive leaves to reflect activities of Palm Sunday. After the service, the congregants join a procession in the streets around the church to add color to the celebrations. The people you can see here, and as I told you earlier, are not only natives or locals in this area, but rather they are all people across the world uh, who come here to witness whatever activities happen in this area. And currently, um, this is the Palm Sunday mass going on and it's a procession. This procession is a reflection of a Palm Sunday in Nazareth. Uh, they are dressed in a scouty way. Like I, if you can look at the shoes, look at the shoes they are putting on. Uh, quite differentiates them from the rest of the people. Uh, when you look at the shoes, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what name I can give to these shoes, but uh, they are quite interesting. They're quite interesting. But what I can say is that uh, um, the, the dressing is extraordinary and people are extremely happy in this area following the procession of this Palm Sunday. In a slight stretch from this church is also a preserved historical site of Joseph, the father of Jesus Christ, where he used to operate his furniture business in Nazareth. This place has also been facelifted with a protruded church where celebrants can attend and communicate with God. And this is in respect and in remembrance of Joseph, the father of Jesus, who was a carpenter. So that's why you see there is a church on top and the, memo, the, the sites, the original site of where he used to do the work is in the caves underground where we could see it very clearly and this is why it is kept without any interference with it. We only celebrate on top of it where a church is built and it is named after him St. Joseph's Church. Palm Sunday is a day which marks Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Daniel Mugoya UBC News in Nazareth. A very colorful event it was. Thank you so much, Daniel Mugoya, for that in-depth report. Now, the Bishop of Lango Diocese, the Right Reverend Professor Alfred Olwa, has urged Christians to use the whole week to cleanse themselves as they wait for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Bishop Olwa made the remarks while celebrating Palm Sunday service at All Saints Cathedral, Nakasero, attended by a huge congregation. <laughs> Believers and followers of Jesus Christ in Uganda have joined Christians across the world to commemorate Jesus Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Palm Sunday, also called Passion Sunday in the Christian tradition, is the first day of the Holy Week and the Sunday before Easter, celebrated since the 4th century. At All Saints Cathedral, Nakasero, New Food Nursery pupils followed by the clergy led the procession as a symbol of joy. The cathedral filled to capacity, amid its praising and singing hymns to reflect the day's message. While presiding over Palm Sunday service, the Bishop Langodels' Right Reverend Professor Alfred Olua asked the congregation to emulate Jesus Christ by following into his footsteps. He walked into the temple in Jerusalem and when in the temple, he changed every structure there of the money changers and he cleansed the temple. So if Jesus walks today into your life, now, this morning, there are areas in your heart that he would like to place. 
Palm Sunday marks the first day of the Holy Week and it comes before Easter Sunday. All of Christians are cautioned to repent of their sins that the resurrection of Jesus Christ finds them clean from sins. Today and here in the city of Kampala because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. If Jesus looks over this city, he looks at the corruption, he looks at the killing, he looks at the mess, he looks at the garbage in our life. Today Jesus walks into your life. You have never had the opportunity to allow Jesus to enter into your hearts. I plead with you. As a messenger of God, I appeal to you. I urge you, it's an urgent issue, today, open your hearts by faith and let Jesus to enter into your hearts and the things for which he has been weeping over your life, the things that no longer gives you peace, let Jesus take the burden and bless you. Hi, Ivan Juko, Edith Flower Namuleme, UBC News. Christians across Busoga region have thronged churches to celebrate Palm Sunday. The day is marked to commemorate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, an event mentioned in each of the four canonical Gospels ahead of Easter. The Bishop of Central Busoga Diocese, the Right Reverend Patrick Wakula, has urged Christians to emulate Jesus' humility and sacrifice to save the world. Well, this Palm Sunday is the climax, the 40th day of our period of Lent. And during the period of Lent, we're going to mourn into the presence of our Lord. We look at Him as our Savior and our Lord. And Palm Sunday, it was the, we call this the triumphal entry when Jesus went to Jerusalem to redeem mankind out of all of the sins, out of all of our iniquities. And as we wave the palms, we say we wave the palms of victory, we wave the palms of commitment, we wave the palms of God giving ourselves into the hands of God, we wave the palms of saying, now God, you must be in charge of my life. The parish priest, St. Peter's Church, Ganga Municipality, Reverend Alfred Joshua Bolia, urged Christians to continue following the health guidelines aimed at combating COVID-19. Here at St. Peter's Church, we have, the, we have water, we have sanitizers, but people do not want to sanitize themselves. They've continued hugging and shaking, and yet it is very, very dangerous. If Christ, this is the day when Christ entered Jerusalem in a a powerful way and if Christ in less than a week he was killed in a shameful death yet he entered Jerusalem as a hero adored by a thousands of people Palm Sunday is remembered as the day Jesus Christ made a triumphant entry into Jerusalem escorted by hundreds of followers who were singing praises of Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Men, women and children ran alongside the donkey and laid their clothes and palm leaves on the ground for Jesus. Well, UBC News tonight takes a very short break. We'll return with more stories. Pay for your dream phone, Mpola Mpola. Get your dream phone today for as low as 1,400 Uganda shillings with free data for a year and pay slowly, slowly. All phones come with daily 50 MBs for 12 months. Repayment period is one year. Available at MTN service centers and M Copper shops. COVID-19 is still here with us. As Owechtiwa Peter Maiga, the Prime Minister of Buganda states, let us all take the necessary precautions. Self-medication is always very dangerous. We should leave medical matters to the medical personnel. It's only a healthy population that can produce wealth. And if you want to work for your well-being, you must care about your health first. Because of the new COVID-19 circulating variants like Omicron, it is very important for all of us to be fully vaccinated with two doses of the same vaccine type. It's only those getting Johnson & Johnson who receive only a single dose to be fully protected. Even after vaccination, continue to adhere to all SOPs by wearing a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose, 
washing your hands regularly with soap and clean water or using an alcohol-based sanitizer, maintaining physical distance of at least 2 meters from others and avoiding crowds. Echa COVID-19, chidja kugwa. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and partners. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months at only 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings, making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only. Airtel, the smartphone. Phone Network. Welcome back from that break. Now with more news this evening, the head of the Congolese delegation at West Nile Summit, Patrick Mutombo, has underscored the benefit of DRC's entry into the East African Community Bloc in the intra-trade opportunities between Uganda and Congo during the summit held in Nebi district. The Congolese delegation were in attendance. Mutombo noted that the time to act is now and that Congo will take will skip no step that will attract development. Allow me to congratulate His Excellency Felix Tshisekedi and the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo. On Friday, the Democratic Republic of Congo officially joined the East African community, making it the seventh member in the bloc. Admission of DRC on the bloc comes with opportunities for intra-community trade deals, peace, security and free movement within the community. The Director General of Uganda Investment Authority, Robert Mukisa, says the authority is going to take advantage of DRC's entry into the block to promote and market domestic investment. Sure that our domestic investors and their DRC counterparts are able to take advantage of this untapped potential between our two countries. During the West Nile Investment Summit, the board chairman, Uganda Investment Authority, Morrison Rokakamba, disclosed that they are optimistic about the new business opportunities brought about by Congo's entry into the block. The 10-point program that ushered the national resistance movement. Point number five, which was about, which is still about creating an integrated and a self-sustaining economy. Under the theme, mobilization of domestic investment for industrialization, market access and job creation, the West Nile Investment Summit intends to harness, promote domestic investment and job creation, among others. Mansuri Segona, one of the delegates from Congo, says the joint collaboration between Uganda and DRC is going to address the security gap in the country. We welcome the, the developments that are being made, especially between the two heads of states, uh, operations should the operation that is happening to keep the head of delegation patrick mutombo says congo has been looking towards the move for investment he also says the construction of connection roads between uganda and congo will give mileage to investment dxc is bringing east african community to the ocean the africa the atlantic ocean i've tired of speeches now we must act West Nile is one of the regions with a competitive trade advantage and a potential market between Uganda and Congo. Minister for Investment Evelyn Anite says government is in the process of streamlining power production and distribution to reduce on production costs. We will give the subsidy. We will find ways of making the electricity cheap. So just leave that to us and tell us how you will bring the electricity here, please. Minister for Finance Matia Kasaija, who was also the chief guest at the summit, says there is need to dissolve border disputes and embrace free movement throughout the East African boundaries. Kasaija says the integration means free movement across the borders, free trade zones, favorable investment and industrialization environment. Why should a Congolese across there come here with the passport? What for? Why should I go to Kenya, go to Tanzania with a passport? For what? 
the DRC began its process of joining the community in 2019 as it sought to expand and strengthen its trade relations with member countries. DRC joins Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania and Uganda in the block. Adia Nakuti, Susan Naunga, UBC. Chikube district has been invaded by African army worms that have destroyed gardens. The African army worms are caterpillars that march across the landscape in large groups feasting on young plants, leaving huge devastation. Take a look. The black and green African army worms are destroying maize crops and grass and over 200 acres of land in Chikube district have been destroyed. The principal agriculture officer Chikube Samuel Kusima identified the affected sub-counties as Bugambe, Changwari, Kaboya, Bohimba, Kazirifumbi and Chikube town council. When you, you look at the visible attributes, it can present in two forms. It can assume a green color, it can also assume a black color. When it assumes a black color, that is an indication that it is breeding in groups. Brigaria, it is uh, like a big army. So that's why you see wherever you've gone, you must have seen the, these black caterpillars. A farmer in Kachavale village in Bogambe sub-county, Nicholas Eribakanya, is another victim whose 10 acres of land have been destroyed by the African army worm. It has caused us a lot of cost. Remember in the first place I ploughed, then... Uh, I planted and now I have plowed out to this, this, this maize which was destroyed. It's giving me a, a, total, a total loss of 10 million. The six centimeter caterpillars need to be detected earlier before destroying crops, hence, fear of causing famine in Bunyoro sub region. <laughs> Safani Mbehurire, the secretary for the Youth Council Chikube District, has requested the Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries to come up to their rescue. We are requesting the government to come on board and help us on this pesticide which is killing our seedlings like maize. They, we, we humble request they provide us with the new seedlings so that we can plant in uh, well. Another seed will be plant well in, in order so that we can get another yield. Thank you. The African army worm has also attacked Nakaseke, Mukono, Wakiso, Katakui, Bugweli, Bukedea, Chiriandongo, Kumi, Namtumba, Mitiana, Bujiri, Busia, among others. Government is set to deploy a full battalion of the Uganda People's Defense Forces in Teso to fight cattle rustling in Karamoja and the surrounding areas. Now this follows a public outcry that resulted from killings, injuries and displacements of the locals. State Minister for Local Government gave this assurance while distributing bicycles to local council leaders in Katakui district. Not sure of what the next minute held. These people of Kapelebyong district ran for their lives. Their quest for safety originated from insecurity resulting from cattle raids. Children carried fellow children along with their mothers who led the way in running away. Some are now living here at Amaseniko Primary School in Okunguru sub-county in Kapelebyong district. Initially, when local and national leaders met, residents wanted reactivation of the Arab boys. Is it a contract plotted against it? So. But then not. A different decision has instead been reached. Yeah, there is supposed to be deployment that is starting tomorrow. So we had to cite a place where we can have a bigger barracks. So we had to coordinate those programs and you'll excuse us we shall be here briefly. Immediately after this program, I'll be rushing again with the RDC to go and receive the brigade commander to see that tomorrow we shall have that bigger deployment to secure us. This is the similar message that national leaders carried to the residents here, who seemed disgruntled. We support this position, and according to SKRA, Ogota Nwanyilibe, Obongoseso Korioto, are we together? Yes. Obongoso Korioto and go and work. You, the LC ones, 
are the leaders at, the, at your environment, at your local ground. According to Swam ke de Porte Dope, Neras ke de Porte Dope, Morkikina. A full battalion is going to land here. A battalion of the team Kerleba Kerba. And 763 soldiers. Apollo Kebe, Ikarna Patakanara. We have guns and bullets. We will be here to protect you. They won't be anyone who says around them. I want to repeat. Victoria Rusoke was here to launch the distribution of bicycles to local council chairpersons. I want to thank you for your hard work. She is optimistic. The security situation in Karamoja, Teso and surrounding areas will normalize. Tomorrow when we deploy, we have confidence that total peace will be But you should be the first agent of peace. The insecurity in Teso and Karamoja is a concern of every peace-loving Ugandan. This has prompted this new move to deploy a full army battalion. Henry Okrut, UBC. Christians from the Diocese of Chigezi are full of hope as the clock ticks closer to the enthronement of their new bishop, Reverend Gadi Akanjuna. A team from the province of the Church of Uganda, led by the provincial secretary, Reverend Canon William Ongeng, has been in the diocese assessing the preparation towards the consecration ceremony slated for May the 29th. The Diocese of Chigezi is preparing for the enthronement of a new bishop following the House of Bishops decision. <laughs> the consecration of Venerable Gadi Akajuna is slated for 29th May 2022 at Rugarama Hill, Kavali Municipality. Venerable Gadi Akajuna was elected the next bishop for the Diocese of Chigezi Diocese by the House of Bishops of the Church of Uganda sitting at Reza Training and Conference Center. On 9 February 2022, a provincial team has been assessing the preparations and were reportedly impressed by the momentum so far. The head of laity for the Diocese of Chigezi, Canon Johnson Monono, who is heading the preparations, says that they have received a lot of support from Christians towards the function. What we are doing is really the work of God, and I want to thank them very much for that. So we are ready, and we are continuing, and... Uh, we shall be there, and I cannot hesitate to say that we shall expect people to come and celebrate with us on 29th of May this year, 2022, when we shall, when the Archbishop of the province of Uganda shall be consecrating our bishop. According to the Provincial Secretary for the Church of Uganda, Reverend William Ogeng, all Christians in the Diocese of Chigezi should celebrate God's choice of the bishop and support him to accomplish his assignments. Although there were some fears that uh, these things may not work out, but we are glad that uh, it is going to work out because it is God's choice. We cannot, we cannot deny what the Lord has done. And we also want to call upon maybe those who feel they were grieved, that they should know that the Lord is the one. Uh, if there is any grievances they have, let them report to the one who appoints. The bishop-elect, who has also been the All Saints Church Archdeacon, Reverend Gadi Akajuna, has already bid farewell to his parishioners and appealed for support. In his new assignment as a bishop, present in the service was the mayor for Kavale Municipality, Center of Yamgisha, who pledged support to the bishop-elect. Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda, Robina Nabanja, has tasked young people to embrace responsible lifestyles in order to achieve social economic progress. Nabanja decries negligent friends that mislead and ruin the lives, lives of their peers, denying them the chance of becoming responsible citizens that contribute to prosperity. She made these remarks while presiding over the sixth graduation ceremony of the University of Chisui, where she emphasized the need to promote sciences. It began with a holy mass led by Archbishop of Kampala Archdiocese, Right Reverend Paul Seymour Gerere. 
He prayed for peace and showered student finalists with blessings. We look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant happiness and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The event was officiated by Prime Minister Robin Anabanja, who challenged youth to desist from reckless lifestyles. Avoid alcoholism. Avoid alcoholism because we have seen a number of people who are very bright, who have succeeded uh, in one way or the other and graduated, but have failed to manage themselves in life. In line with the gospel of President Yoweri Museveni, Nabanja lauded the University of Kisubi for promoting sciences. As the HE, the president has always emphasized the country needs to put more weight on science because it is the foundation upon which all technical and medical fields are anchored. The university chancellor, Brother Casio Aizire, encouraged finalists to embrace discipline in order to succeed. When we talk about someone having character, they have traits such as courage, honesty, loyalty, and integrity. To develop character, start by highlighting your most important values. Then uphold those values even in situations that seem unimportant. Excelling finalists were awarded with first class degrees, accompanied with prizes to their happiness. And I believe that when I go out, I will help the people of God and take them to God with the skills that I have got. Some of their parents were equally excited. The University of Kisubi is promoting sciences by training more teachers in the required and relevant disciplines. Henry Okrut, UBC. As a measure of improving sanitation among people living in slum areas of Namuongo, the Rotary Club of Kisugu, Victoria has embarked on construction of drainage that disturbs the community during the rainy season. Community appreciated this move and advised fellows to stop throwing rubbish that hinder smooth flow of water in the drainage. Namuongo is a Kampala suburb north of the Rayri line. It is a slum area subdivided into seven zones with over 20,000 residents. The area has a poor drainage that keeps many people living in a sorry state due to diseases from this drainage with no access to clean water. To solve this challenge, the Rotary Club of Chisugu, Victoria, through a charity campaign, codenamed Global Grant, intends to provide access to clean water, access to sanitation facilities, is constructing the drainage to prevent communicable diseases. The program coordinator, George Ahimbi Sibwe, says after realizing the poor living conditions of the community, they decided to come to their rescue. We are here to reach out to the people to help improve their sanitation. We are looking at even further improving it and making it much better to reduce on uh, the rubbish pit that is being disposed in uh, the drainage channels. We are also going further to teach them on water, sanitation and hygiene. He appealed to the community to support this project and consider it as theirs. To the community is for them to appreciate what we are doing. They should own these projects, let them become part and parcel of them. Then uh, let them be able to sustain them, let them be able to look after them. And in turn, these projects are going to help them become better people. Engineer William Chibuka, leading the construction, assured the community of durable work and advised them to stop throwing rubbish in the drainage. We come here to help out, sort out a long-standing drainage problem. Unfortunately, we can clean, we can clear water, but if the habits of the residents don't change, in the next five months, we'll be back to square zero. Community members appreciated and narrated the hardship situation they are living in. Kuba do chafu bungi, kasasiro, kazambi, toi, 
naye tusanyuse kuraba abagira kisane bajya ne bazi ne bajya ne barongosa umwara guno ubade mucafu nyo ngabana bafemwe bazanyira abatuze bawano umwe basuro buvera bwa biera in this global grant program the rotary club of chisugu is to construct two latrine blocks clear drainage channels set up a container housing a briquette making facility among others estimated to cost $70,000「COVID came, it felt like it destroyed everything my mom had built. She was ready to let go of her dreams. But when one door shuts, a window opens. She grabbed her last command and took a leap of faith. She refused to give up. So with a bit of daring and grandma's secret recipe, her business was back. Not just bigger. Beyond her wildest imagination. This is a story of a regular Ugandan just like you, who harnessed the power of technology to provide a solution for us. How about you tell us your story? UG needs more of you. To share your story, visit airtel.co.ug slash UG needs more of you or call or SMS 162. Airtel, the smartphone network. And now into the world of business, Ugandans have continued to benefit from Indians' generosity with the latest offer from non-government organization, Uganda Social Education Welfare Association, benefiting 32 orphanages. The association has, in fact, increased its contribution to Uganda with medical and education infrastructure in the pipeline. If anyone puts a question of where Ugandans would be minus Indians' generosity, the reply would point to desperation. Because the Indians contribute a lot to the economic well-being of Ugandans, the Indians' generosity has now been accentuated with Uganda Social Education Welfare Association that offers food relief to 32 orphanages in and around Kampala. We are doing the charity for education. The name is SEVA, means Social Educational Welfare Association. So we are doing the uh, uh, charity at the same time educational support and medical support. The orphanages received several food items, including rice, beans, sugar, salt, soap and maize flour. The largest part is being taken by these people from India. Mm, and uh, Vahid has done a lot to us, because he's always there. We also call well wishers more to do as these people are doing, because these are foreigners, they are just spending. And then we have also the Ugandans who have much more money, who can even give, because someone to give in the way of Allah, it is a good heart. The relief was delivered through a collaboration that also had Mandela Group and Mukwano. Mandela, as a Mandela Group, we are participating uh, to Gaseva about 10 million worth of food items we distribute. And we have been, we are from also member of the Uga Seva, Uganda Social Educational Welfare Association. We are doing this charity, uh, giving the orphanages and the, the masjid. The plan, especially on the health front, is to construct a state-of-the-art medical facility. 